I'm Emeril Lagasse, and, and welcome to the essence of Emeril. You know, I, I'm, I'm just amazed. I, you know, I've, I've been a good boy. It's not even Christmas, and I got a brand new stove. I mean, look at this thing. It's the Cadillac, and that's not all. Look at this. New gadgets, always. That's what happens when you're on the television food network. Look at this thing, huh? You get all kinds of gadgets. Hey, it's a happy day for me. Look at this. Happy day for me right here. Because I got a brand new stove. All we got to do now is cook. Well, speaking about cooking, let me tell you. I couldn't imagine life without potatoes. Could you? I mean, it's so hard to even imagine that. No potatoes? It's such a major part of our diet. But even though the white potato was cultivated, they say, about 5,000 years ago in Peru, and the Spanish brought it back to Spain in the mid-1500s. But it really didn't become popular in Europe for another 300 years after that. Now, let me tell you, you know the amazing, the amazing tale? How many pounds of potatoes that we consume on the average of Americans? You know, it's really researched and discussed that Americans eat about 130 pounds. That's a lot of French fries. 130 pounds of potatoes a year per person. That's not per family. That's per person. I love potatoes. You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to show you there are all kinds of varieties of potatoes and all kinds of things to do with potatoes. You just got to be a little creative with them. So I thought today I would just dedicate the whole show on potatoes in different types. This here, this is a potato that's very popular right now in a lot of the grocery stores. You can see that. It's, it's called a Yukon Gold. Yukon Gold. And purple potatoes, look at that. And there's fingling potatoes. Here's a little golden potato. The old Red Bliss potatoes that are grated. An Idaho potato. It's pretty popular. And they're basically just graded in sizes, too, you know, like 50 count, 60 count per case for Idaho potatoes. Well, this particular potato right here, the, not only the purple, but also the red potato, this is what they call a little creamer or a little A or B grade potato. Hey, and this is actually, this is really purple inside. I know you probably don't believe it, but look, I'm going to show you. See that? They're really purple inside. And they uh, cook up that color as well. And they're really quite, quite tasty. But the basic thing that I like to do with, with potatoes is just to bake them. And you can bake them and get fancy or do whatever you like. And a lot of the restaurants right now even have fancy potatoes. I mean, look at this one. This is the classic one right here. The classic American potato. It's just baked with cheddar cheese and bacon and a little sour cream. Woo-hoo! I love baked potatoes. And I'm going to show you one of my fancier versions right now. I'm going to go into our special oven. Hey, can we, can we see inside of here? Hey, look at that. Brand spanking new. Huh. Now, I'm going to show you one of my little fancier versions of potato. Basically, a lot of restaurants, particularly around the holiday time, you know, make one cut just like that, and then we can sort of angle it and make a little cut that way. A lot of restaurants today are really serving potatoes for main courses. Not just a side accoutrement, but they're doing all kinds of things. And at Emeralds, around the holiday times particularly, you see that cut? It makes it like a little flower like that. You see? You see that? Because what I like to do is I like to just, that looks pretty simple. But now what we're going to do is we're going to give it a little bit of salt, just a little bit. The salt and potatoes work fantastic, as well as pepper. Now, I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. We're going to just do my classic baked potato. Lots of sour cream. Lots of sour cream. I like to use a little bit of chive. I like lots of bacon. 
and I like lots of cheddar cheese. And you can either just serve that just like that, simple. Hey, that's the American staple. You know those red potatoes? You could just take a little bit of those red potatoes like I have right here, and you can really just fancy them up. You're just sort of boiling, boil them until they're fork tender. And then what you can do is you can either just cut a little top or a little bottom off like that, and then you can use one of these fancy gadgets right here, the little Parisian scoops, and you can just sort of Parisian yourself. See that, how we do that? You just Parisian yourself a little, little bit like that, and you can fry those for later on. Let's cut the bottom off here and here. I love serving these as a little amuse at the restaurant or a little first course with a little glass of champagne. Woo! Boy, now we're talking. Now we're talking potatoes. I'm going to do one more right there. And here comes one of my favorite things now. We're going to use a little fresh, little fresh ground pepper. And then we take a little bit of sour cream. You see that? A little sour cream, just like that. And then once you get the sour cream in those little guys, just like we did right there, the way that I love to finish them mm -hmm, is with some beautiful chive. And then what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of beluga, savruga caviar, and just sort of top them potatoes just like that. Kind of fill, and kind of run right in the little holes that we made. You see that? And that's just the beginning of how creative and how simple what you could do. Look at those guys, huh? What you can do with potatoes. And let me tell you something right after the break. I'm going to come back and make you one of my all-time favorite potato dishes. Stay with me. We'll be right back on The Essence of Emerald. Welcome back. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and I'm glad that you are with me because we're potatoing here. We're having a great potato time. And this next potato rest. Did you miss those two great potato, the standard classic American stuffed and those little caviar stuffed ones? Oh, well, they were tasty, let me tell you. But this next potato recipe is a little classical creation of lyonnaise potatoes. Well, we have a great little story at the restaurant at Emeralds because there's a man in New Orleans, Mr. Leo Miller, and he's a great guy and he's been a customer of mine for, oh, 10 or 12 years, Leo and Sue Miller. And every time Leo comes to the restaurant, he asks for lyonnaise potatoes. They're not on the menu, but when he asks for them, we do them, and uh, they're one of my favorites, actually one of my favorite potatoes. So I thought I would share them with you today. This here is called a mandolin. Not to be confused with the one that you can play with strings on it. This is a, a kitchen mandolin. And you see the, these gadgets, it's got all kinds of blades and all sorts of things. But basically what the mandolin is for, you can see how I got the blade set on this one, is to just slice potatoes. Now they come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. You see how that is here? I'm going to show you one of my, another another shape of potato with this mandolin that's called a gaufret potato. And basically for the gaufret potato, you need to, you see that action that I'm doing? One side there, one side there. You see that? And one, and two, and three. Come on, gaufrets. Here we go now. All right, now I'm going to show you. Watch this. You see that? They look like little waffles, and that's exactly what they are, little waffles. And you know what some of these little waffles do? Well, I'm going to show you that in a minute. So I'm going to tell you, before we do the gaufrets, I think what I'll, if you don't have one of these, that's okay. You can just do it, 
just by hand, just like this. Just slice them real thin, not too thick. Because now we're going to make Leo's Lyonnaise potatoes. That's what we're going to make. We'll slice the potato like that. And what you got to do is you got to blanch these a little bit. Not, uh, not, too, not too much, but I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. We're going to just take Leo's potatoes. We're going to blanch them right inside of our little fryer. Shake them up. We got all kinds of neat gadgets here on the Essence of Emerald. We got fryers, we got new stoves, new ovens. Hey. Well, what I'm doing is I'm not cooking the potatoes all the way through. I'm just going to blanch them a little bit. I'm going to show you why in a second. When I'm using this to just sort of separate a little bit, just when they get a little color. And the reason why I'm doing this is because my good friend Leo Miller, with his uh, Lyonnaise potatoes, he likes them really good and crisp. And Leo, I hope you're watching out there. So we're going to just get them a little color in this. And then we're going to finish them right up. You see how they're just getting a little lightly golden brown there? Nice oil that we have. Get a little color. The potatoes a little bit thick, so once we get some color in them, they start getting, starting to get a little bit crispy as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to just drain them off a little bit. Set them right on there. And then we're going to bring these right over here and I'm going to show you my good friend Leo Miller's Lyonnaise potatoes. I've got some olive oil and this skillet is blazing. Not, not too, but good and hot. It's got to be good and hot. And lyonnaise, which means with onions, that's exactly what we start with. We start with a little bit of onion. We get that onion just cooking a little bit. Pop, pop. Now, the thing with lyonnaise, good lyonnaise potatoes, beside the onions, you need a lot of onions, is you need just simple salt, and you need a lot of fresh pepper. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add some salt as well as those potatoes that I took out. I'm going to salt those just a little bit while they're still a little warm. That way the potato absorbs. And then what we're going to do now, then add a lot of fresh black pepper. Lots of it. You need lots of it for good lyonnaise potatoes. All right, once they start getting caramelized, as you can see that they're doing right now, what we're going to do is then we're going to add our potatoes to that. And I haven't forgotten about Woo, look at that, huh? So simple. And you want them kind of get them crispy and cook them up. And before I finish them off, let's taste one. Mmm. Oh, Leo, you'd be so proud. Mmm. Now I'm going to show you one of my favorite ones. Right this way. You remember the ones that we did on the mandolin? Watch this. We're going to take them and we're going to fry them up too. Why Leo's potatoes are frying away, I'm going to show you one of my favorite ones. Fry them up really good, real quick. You see that waffle cut that we did? It makes them fry up and get really golden brown. And there's a potato chip down there in Louisiana called Zapp's Potato Chips. And uh, Mr. Zappo. He's a great guy. Great potato chips. They're fried in peanut oil. And we have a little joke around the restaurant because I eat so many zaps that I think I created my own. And what that creation of mine is, is what I call truffle zaps. And that's simply that after they're golden brown like that, we drain them off. 
drain them off. Don't they look beautiful? And then what we do is that we take a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, and then what I do is I drizzle. I drizzle a little bit of this delicious truffle oil, just a little bit, a little bit of that truffle oil on some of those zaps, and then I got truffled zaps. And now I'm going to put my friend Leo Miller's crispy lionese. Woo, woo, look at that. Well, Leo, there's the lionese potatoes just for you, baby. And I got a little bit of parsley right on there. And then a few of my truffle zaps. And when we come back, the hottest potato dish of them all. Stay with me. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back on The Essence of Emerald. Welcome back, Emeril Lagasse here. You know, I've had probably about seven or eight letters in the last week, and thank you very much for writing in to us here at Television Food Network. Hey, come on, write in. I'm going to tell you how to do that. But I've had these letters for my mashed potatoes at NOLA. Well, look, I boiled some, and the liquid is pretty much all gone. These are just those red potatoes. You see that? I hope you're watching out there now. Mary Lou in Tennessee, here you go. I'm going to add some cream. I'm going to add some cream to those delicious potatoes. And then you got to have some butter. What can I say? One, ah, uh, two, I uh, will make them real good. Three. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Potatoes. You see how many different things you can do with them? I got a little salt, and I left the skin on those, Mary Lou. That was your question. I left them on. You just leave those red, the red potatoes, the skin on, old-fashioned way. You better believe it. Now, they need a lot of garlic, right? As this starts cooking up, you just take a good old masher, and you start mashing them, just like I'm showing you right here, okay? You just keep mashing them in. Keep mashing them and mashing them and mashing them and mashing them and mashing them. And while those are mashing a little bit like that, and we're just going to let those cook just a little bit more, all right? I'm going to go to my oven here, my great old oven. Woo! And guess what I have? Roasted garlic. You see that? It's these guys right here, just with a little bit of oil and salt and pepper, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to add that roasted garlic, all those cloves of roasted garlic, because that's how we do it at NOLA. We make them so tasty and good. And as they start cooking, we're going to take them off the heat and mash that roasted garlic in there. Doesn't that look terrific? So you want to keep the skin on them, mash them, keep working all of that in. Now, when you're making these mashed potatoes, whether you're doing this type like we do at NOLA or you're making your favorite type, I like the skins on them. You can take the skins off. At Emeralds, we take the skins off. But after you boil them in their fork tender, right, what you want to do is you want to drain all the water out of them. You drain all the water out of them and then just leave them in the pot and work them on the stove in a low heat. Because the rest of that water that's in there, it'll evaporate, as you just seen what we did here. And then you just sort of mash them and you start working all that fame, great stuff in there. A little more salt and pepper. Whoo! Well, you've seen it here, I'll tell you. We've done all kinds of great things today. We've done all kinds of great things. Look at that. You just dish up. Those Nola roasted garlic mashed potatoes just like that. And boy, I'll tell you, look at that. You garnish them the way you want with a little green onions or a little bit of cheese or whatever you like. What can I say? Potatoes. So easy. Such an American staple. But you can see how creative that you can get with them. Hey, I'm going to hope to see you tomorrow right here on The Essence of Emerald. Bye now.